All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here. I want to uh, recognize our behavioral health response partners and local uh, leaders supporting this critical work. Our councilman, Councilman Z. Cohen, uh, Councilwoman Odette Ramos, and then we know that Councilman uh, Cohen has been a steadfast advocate of behavioral health response efforts. Jonathan Davis, Executive Director of Baltimore Crisis Response, Inc. Krista Taylor, President and CEO with the Bol Behavioral Health System Baltimore. I almost said the old name. Uh, Director Shantae Jackson of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. Our City Administrator, Chris Shorter and the fabulous members of the Collaborative Planning and Implementation Committee and our Trauma-Informed Care Task Force. We are gathered here today to make an important announcement regarding the investment, uh, investment of our behavioral health response ecosystem here in Baltimore. Uh, BCRI has been an incredible partner in our efforts to transform the way that we respond to residents' mental needs uh, by ensuring that residents experience behavioral health crises receive appropriate support from trained professionals. Uh, this helps reduce the burden on our emergency departments and our police officers who are often overly relied on in these situations and gives residents the proper assistance to cope with and overcome distress. To this effect, uh, they support our 911 di diversion uh, program, provide behavioral and mental health response training to BPD personnel, manage our regional 988 behavioral health hotline call center, and are an integral a part of our region-wide Greater Baltimore Regional Integrated Crisis System collaboration. Uh, this is why I am proud today to announce that we will continue to fund the great work being done by BCRI throughout our city. I am allocating $1.5 million to BCRI to expand their capacity. <laughs> to best serve our residents experiencing behavioral health crises. I want to again uh, thank Councilman Cohen for his leadership in making sure that we awarded these funds to support organizations like BCRI who are working on the ground to operationalize our shared vision uh, for enhanced behavioral health response efforts. We are committed uh, to this work and building out these partnerships because it is going to take all of us to establish the behavioral health ecosystem that better serves the needs of our residents here in Baltimore City. Uh, thank you, and now I will turn it over to Councilman Cohen for remarks. Mr. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mental illness is not a crime. Being sick should not cause someone to forfeit their freedom. Policing and public health cannot be conflated. As the first city to have legislated trauma-informed care, Baltimore has an opportunity to model systems of safety and wellness for the world. And like our mayor often says, to reimagine what public safety means. Today's commitment of $1.5 million to Baltimore crisis response is a major step forward. As a nation, we are staring down the barrel of a profound mental health crisis exacerbated by the pandemic, fueled by inequality, violence, toxic stress, substance abuse, all have skyrocketed over the past three years. Small conflicts quickly escalate into bloodshed. When we deinstitutionalized psychiatric hospitals, we didn't have a plan for where patients would go. Most ended up on our streets or in prisons. Our solution for a health problem was a jail cell. Now our hospitals are overburdened, we have a shortage of clinicians, and our homeless population has exploded. This past weekend, I was in San Jose teaching trauma-informed care to their city council. As I walked through the streets, I passed by countless Californians living in tents, openly struggling with addiction, schizophrenia, and so many other forms of mental illness. A city where business is booming, where tech millionaires and billionaires are making money hand over fist, looked like a scene from the Great Depression. This is America in 2022. 
It's why I'm so grateful to get to do this work with my great colleague, Councilmember Ramos, who constantly reminds us that for healing to happen, you need a home. Today, I wanna to thank Mayor Scott for funding something we all value. 1.5 million is such an important start. We have more work to do, but it is a great start. I'm grateful to Ali Smith for her unique ability to pull people together, to Jonathan for joining us in Baltimore and leading BCRI, to Krista at BHSB, to Commissioner Harrison, to our great partner in this work, Director Chante Jackson, to Chris Shorter, our city administrator. I also want to thank our members of the Trauma-Informed Care Task Force, without whose leadership and advocacy, this likely would not have happened. These folks have poured everything they've got into creating a healing city, and I am forever grateful. What this announcement means is that when someone is having a mental health crisis, we can send a team of trained professionals to help address it. That we will really have capacity. We know BCRI has been doing this work, but for them to have capacity to really meet the need. Like the mayor said, it means less pressure on our overworked, understaffed EMTs. It means that our police officers can focus their precious time on solving violent crime and patrolling. An officer from Southeast told me recently that he spends approximately 40% of his time responding to mental health crises. 40%. In a city with unremitting violence, is that what we want our police officers doing with almost half their time? If there is a concern for safety, we can, send, we can now send a co-responder team with police and BCRI working together. I'm proud to have fought with my colleagues on the task force for this funding, and I'm deeply grateful to Mayor Scott for stepping up. Let me just conclude by saying this. It's okay to not be okay. Seeking mental health help is an act of courage. Many of us are struggling right now, and if you or someone you know needs help, dial 988. Don't suffer in silence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councilman, and thank you for your, for your leadership and your partnership on this issue and so many others. Now, I will turn it over to Jonathan, uh, who will talk about the great stuff that BCRI continuously does, but also what will happen now with even more, more funds for them. Jonathan? Good morning, everyone. My name is Jonathan Davis, and I am the Executive Director for Baltimore Crisis Response, Inc. I want to give thanks to Mayor Scott for his lead by example approach, to Councilman Cohen and Councilmember Ramos and the Trauma-Informed Task Force for your advocacy for Baltimoreans, and to give thanks to Krista Taylor for her leadership within and support of our behavior health system. I give thanks to the board members of BCRI for their leadership. Lastly, but not least, I would like to give thanks to the BCRI team who commits day in and day out to support our communities. We know that the crisis system is the first line of defense for individuals and families facing behavioral health emergencies. As BCRI celebrates its 30 year anniversary this year, we reflect on our commitment to support our neighbors and envision a more deeply rooted role within the behavioral health system to deepen and widen our impact as we contribute meaningfully to a thriving and caring ecosystem. This investment in BCRI is an investment in Baltimore and our vision in ensuring all have easy access to high quality behavior health services. BCRI will utilize the money to support capacity building in both administration and operations to ensure we are providing high quality services through call center, residential programming, and community services and activities. Additionally, we will strengthen community engagement with outreach and create roles and programs to strengthen community partnerships within the service delivery industry. 
BCRI commits to being good stewards of this investment as we continue to support the health and well-being of Baltimore. And please don't forget that 988 is here to help. Thank you all. And last but not least, we will hear from Krista Taylor from Behavioral Health Systems Baltimore. Good morning, everyone. I'm Krista Taylor, President and CEO of Behavioral Health System Baltimore. For those who don't know us, Behavioral Health System Baltimore, or BHSB, is a nonprofit that's responsible for overseeing mental health and substance use services in Baltimore City, including mental health crisis response services. We are enthusiastic about the 1.5 million in city funding to help grow and expand crisis services in Baltimore. Thank you, Councilman Cohen, for your work to help secure this much needed funding. This investment reflects a shifting of values, showing that mental health crisis services should be part of our community emergency response and should be valued in the same way we value other emergency response services like fire, police, and hospital services. This is a priority that BHSB has advocated for. With this funding, mental health crisis prevention and response services will expand and allow more people to get help. I want to thank a few, few more people that have helped make this happen. Mayor Scott for his commitment and leadership in supporting mental health and substance use services in the city as well as the reforms needed to better support health and wellness in our communities. Thank you, Mayor. Allie Smith at the Mayor's Office for her leadership and partnership. Councilman Cohen and Councilwoman Ramos for their outspoken support for the need to adequately fund mental health crisis services in the city. And Baltimore Crisis Response for ensuring the services are readily available. Thank you, Jonathan, and to your staff as well. Finally, I want to remind people that if you need emergency emotional support or help finding mental health resources, call the 988 helpline. Call 988 anytime to connect with a counselor who will listen and provide confidential emotional support. And if you'd like more information about the helpline and how it can help you, go to www.988helpline.org. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And now we will open it up for questions. Senior. Mr. Mayor, my yes. question is off topic. Is that okay? Essentially, there, I believe this uh, officer, Lawrence Smith, is being investigated for time card and overtime fraud. Can you um, give us your comments on that? Well, listen, anything like that you have to take seriously. I know that uh, the FBI is investigating and the school system is the lead on that, as is the school police officer. And uh, in any way that our police department will be asked to assist, the commissioner will make sure that they do so. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, McKenzie. Um, we know that there are various pilot programs in place right now uh, with your office and with the downtown partnership to look at ways to safely manage the squeegee kid corner program. Uh, we know that Baltimore Police is doing a short-term overtime deployment strategy. We know that there's been 266 hours of overtime that has been spent since late July to have officers sit on the corners. Last week, Commissioner Harrison said that that plan is unsustainable given the amount of overtime. What is the plan from your office moving forward and why put in a place short term when the leader of an agency says was never sustainable in the first place? So I, what I'll say this, Mackenzie, and I think uh, as the commissioner is standing, sitting right behind you, he would, he would understand a couple things. We often put in uh, short term overtime for things, right? The police department has an overtime budget. We spend overtime budgets uh, across the city when there are issues. So, uh, this is an issue that we know has existed for a long time. Uh, this is not just an overtime thing. I think you guys are misconstruing what the commissioner said in that way. And what we are doing, as you have heard from us time and time and time and time again, and the answer is not going to change, 
We are working on this issue in the short, immediate, and the long term. This is why we pull together members of the business community, people who squeegee, people who formlessly squeegee, the philanthropic community, city government, all together to come together to present how we can deal with the issue in every angle. And when we are done with that group, as we will, as we told you guys what the outline and what that timeline was gonna be, then we'll come back to you. But we spend police overtime every day in Baltimore, not just downtown for squeegeeing, and squeegeeing is not a program, not just downtown, but in neighborhoods that are uh, experiencing violence, which is where I'm talking to the commissioner about the most and where we should be focusing our attention. Do you think that that was an appropriate use of resources given the amount of uh, understaffing we know that BPD has right now? And we also have programs Well, I guess let me just educate you a little bit about why we spend overtime. We spend overtime because we're understaffed. I understand that. So if we're, we're spending overtime to staff up across the city each and every day, we have to meet constants on the street, and we're going to do that in the way that we can. As you just saw last week, I, I'm shocked that you guys haven't run a story about the incentives that we're offering about we to, keep, to keep people and retract, uh, attract more people into the police department. We're going to continue to fund out the police department in the way, in a responsible way. But for the residents of Baltimore who want to see through all, all the, the nonsense, you should know that we spend overtime every day to make sure that police are on the streets in Baltimore wherever they're needed, period. I read the story. Okay, I read the story this morning about the incentives, so I know that we did run it. And speaking of that program, I do have a question. Maybe Commissioner Harrison wants to take it. Um, the president of the FOP submitted a letter saying that the BPD's new incentive program is really not going to help with the attrition program, uh, the attrition problem, rather. What's your response to that, and what's I'll, being I'll done? I'll respond very quickly. I'll do what I always do for the president. I'll call him directly and speak to him like a man. Next question. Senior, you got another one, you good? All right, thank you everybody.